It's Veterans Day, and it's not cliche to thank a veteran, you know. You know, there's so many uh, radio and television shows I have done regarding the concept of Veterans Day, and it becomes kind of like a habit. Okay, so on Veterans Day, you got to talk about uh, veterans. Well, well, you know, there's, there, there's a lot compelling about Veterans Day. There's a lot of conversation that has to be had. There's a lot of things going on inside the veteran community that ought to, ought to be discussed. There's, there's, there's a lot of conversation about how America responds to our veterans. There's a lot of conversation about what we expect from government to treat our veterans. There's a whole bunch of things out there, but at the beginning and the end, I hope that sometime today that you pause for somebody that you know who happens to have served our country and thank them for it. That's not a preachy thing. That's just something we should do. And sometimes in our society, when we've become kind of separated from each other a little bit, um, we think that's kind of like a difficult thing to do. It's not. And by the way, if you didn't make the cut on Veterans Day, meaning you didn't thank a veteran for their service on Veterans Day, guess what? The sun will come out tomorrow, and you can do the same thing uh, tomorrow and the next day and the next day. I am foregoing our usual rundown this evening to spend some time talking to three veterans. Uh, I think there are different perspectives from each of our guests and I shall introduce you. But first, uh, here was just a thought from one of the gentlemen out there on the road today that I thought kind of captured it in very simple words. Everybody that's up, that has been in the service is, should have the, you know, the honor of being supported, especially when we come out. The, the honor of being supported. Tony, Tony isn't, that, isn't, isn't that kind of what today's about? It the, is. The honor of being supported? It is. It certainly is. Mr. Uh, Fonseca is an old friend of mine. His second appearance on, on Dan York's State of Mind, by the way, so you're tied for the lead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, District 1 Commander, Veterans of Foreign War here in Rhode Island. He's got two of his comrades here this evening, so we're going to have uh, three separate segments on concepts. A little bit later on, we're going to talk about the history of Veterans Day, which I think gets lost on people, and then whether young veterans are actually engaging the process of, of, of remaining connected to the whole concept. What's your thought uh, on Veterans Day 2014? Well, first of all, thank you for you having me Always back. Good to see you. Appreciate it, Dan. And uh, the thought process on this day is obviously, as you pointed out, to thank the people who have uh, put everything on the line for the country. And those people should be thanked. And as you pointed out, not just today, mm. but every day that they are a scene. Somebody should say thank you to these people. Tell us about your service. Um, I served uh, two years in the military. I joined the Navy in 1965 and um, went to Vietnam in 1968 uh, to 69 and served with the 1st Marine Battalion over there as a uh, Navy corpsman. So um, I met a lot of great Marines there, a lot of great Marines. Saw a lot of action? No more than anybody else. Hmm. Okay. You're humble about it. Uh, Vietnam is better now. A little better now? If you're asking me about the way the Vietnam veterans are being treated, yes. uh, absolutely. It's, it's a bad a, time there for a long time. Well, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of bad feeling. I, I can remember um, going to Vietnam and leaving from LAX, and uh, I was in my Navy uniform, and of course I had no insignias on it that pointed me out as a, a Vietnam veteran. And my, my friend and I, uh, who had gone to course school together in uh, Great Lakes, uh, Illinois, we were boarding the plane, or getting to board the plane, and we saw all these people with these signs, uh, and they were pointing these signs at people who were coming off the planes from Vietnam. And uh, horrible things were being said to these people, horrible things. And it actually made my friend and I, Dan, uh, somewhat um, stand backish. You know, here we were that we were going to Vietnam to do for our country. And now these people who had already done what they needed to do for, the, for their country were now coming back and were being, again, said, told very nasty things. Very uh, nasty. It was a strange national conversation back in the day. I mean, I was, you know, I was born in 61, so I only remember, you know, Walter Cronkite chronicling the, the, the entire exercise over there. So I was too young to kind of get the feeling of what it was like for veterans of that war, soldiers of that war, to come back in the late 60s, early 70s, mid 70s. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of bitterness uh, that has had to have been nurtured. I think it's gotten better. I, it certainly has, Dan. Uh, you know, people but the, but the, the, the wounds not only of war, but of how 
Vietnam veterans were treated when they came back still exists significantly. Absolutely. Uh, I remember coming home and uh, they had changed the um, the area that that the veterans came into. We now landed in a military base. We landed in Long Beach, California. So when I came back, there was none of that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I took a plane ride to uh, uh, to Washington, and the plane was fogged in, and uh, I wanted to get home so badly that I got on the train and I took the train home from Washington D.C. to uh, Promise, Rhode Island, and uh, actually walked into the door before my mother and father were supposed to leave, and it was hmm. very heartwarming. Good moment. Yeah. Veterans of Foreign Wars, the organization is important. Why? There are a lot of um, different points of view that have to be put forward. Obviously, uh, Veterans Administration obviously is a tremendously big area where veterans have not been given the proper care. Uh, there are local um, situations, uh, whether it's um, you know jobs or uh, whether it's uh, supporting these people with uh, subsistence for simple things like oil. I mean, the, you know, we we support our veterans, and if they need uh, assistance with food or, or fuel or electric bill, we provide that to them. And obviously, the more of us that there is, the louder our voice is. Mm. And that's with anything, quite frankly. But we need the veterans of foreign wars to reach out to the veterans of Vietnam, especially those guys, you know, because of the way they were treated. And, and again, a lot of them started their own groups because they didn't feel comfortable at the time. But I'd like to extend an open hand to these guys, being a, uh, a Vietnam veteran myself, and having served in two services, um, whoever's out there listening, please contact uh, your local post, the Veterans of Foreign Wars post, and we're always looking for people to join and be part of the organization. All right, good message. Please uh, take Tony up on that. When we come back, we'll hear a little bit about the history of Veterans Day, and then we'll talk a little bit about whether you know younger veterans are actually feeling at home with organizations like this. Stay with us. You are, the veterans of America, the most trusted among us and the most tested of all Americans. Collectively, you represent generations of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardmen who have served and sacrificed for all of us. You are not only the heart and soul, but you are the very spine of this nation. Uh, well said by the Vice President uh, today. Uh, John Chisana is, is my, my next guest, the State Commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars in Rhode Island and a retired Master Sergeant in the Army, correct? Yes, sir. And a Vietnam veteran yourself. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, welcome. Thank Happy you Veterans much. Day. Thank thanks you for having me. Thanks for coming. Uh, you want to give a little history. Well, we, we go through Veterans Day, sometimes people forget how the heck it started. Uh, you know, uh, we as, uh, as Americans have a tendency of really not reading our history, mm -hmm. and it doesn't hurt every once in a while to hear a about refresher. it. A little refresher. Our Veterans Day actually started on the 11th hour, the 11th day, the 11th month in 1918 as an armistice, a temporary cessation of hostilities between the Germans and our allies. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles was actually signed on June 28, 1919, but we didn't like that. We wanted uh, uh, the 11th of November. So Woodrow Wilson decided to make that our holiday, and they called it Armistice Day. Um, in uh, the 83rd Congress amended that 1938. They dropped Armistice Day, and they uh, used uh, Veterans Day instead. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower signed that. Um, President uh, Gerald Ford, um, he didn't like the fact that they had a uniform holidays bill. And they tried to get Washington's birthday, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and Columbus Day on Mondays. I remember that time. Now, this, these are the times I remember. This is my history here I'm talking about. Mm. Uh, the veterans 
they weren't having any part of that. So they decided uh, not to have this. They made a big stink about you it. Get on and Monday, I don't you make it a shopping day. Uh, that's exactly why they did you gotta, it. You gotta, <laughs> every holiday in America is about a shopping day, don't you get I that? I think they were trying to do something good, actually, and give no. American people three-day holidays. Mm -hmm. But the, the veterans didn't like it. I didn't like it myself. So uh, uh, Gerald Ford uh, signed a new law, and they said November 11th from now on is going to be uh, our holiday, our Veterans Day. Um, a lot of times when we talk about all this, uh, a lot of Americans uh, think of it as a solemn occasion. Now, I'm talking about my personal feelings about it and how I feel about it. Um, if you heard what I was talking about, cessation of, uh, of hostilities, uh, a holiday for all our veterans, to me, it's a day of joy. Um, I, I'm happy I came back. When I came back, my grandfather, who was a World War I veteran era, my father was a World War II veteran, um, and myself, I was a Vietnam veteran, and we got together and uh, we celebrated the day uh, as uh, Italian Americans with. Uh, I'm glad our, you said that because we actually were talking about on the radio today a little bit whether it, it feels appropriate to say Happy Veterans Day because we have a culture to celebrate days of note, holiday, that kind of thing. Um, you say absolutely, absolutely, positively. I here, I made it. I came home. Uh, we always spent a few moments of the day, but just a few moments remembering our departed comrades. We have a whole day devoted for that, and we Memorial we, we, Day. We, we, yes, we are. Yeah. Yes. But that's it, the start of the summer. That that uh, well, you know, it it to me it's a uh, it's a remembering of my uh, my grandfather, and my my dad. Always go out and make sure that they have their uh, flags uh, on their grave sites now, and uh, and that's when I remember them and it gives me the feeling of sadness but this is our day well the irony is I uh, see I, I think people do because November especially the time change right is a little, well, you sometimes you get a beautiful day today was pretty nice mm -hmm. but it's it, it, it's it's getting darker Veterans Day is you think should be melancholy Memorial Day which requires uh, a, a moment of mourning slash experience to understand fallen heroes generally happens on a weekend where everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. so we've, we've yeah. mixed this thing up a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, I think so, yes, uh, definitely. Today my uh, sisters called me, uh, all wishing me a, a happy Veterans Day. The first thing they write out, oh, John, happy Veterans Day. My daughter was just calling me a few minutes ago. She, I'll call her back and it'll be a happy Veterans Day. And, and everybody in my family is, is always happy and glad that I came home, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty good about that. I'm is a happiness happy to that. service for your country? I served for 27 years, um, retired master sergeant, and uh, I didn't regard any moment of it. Um, it was uh, uh, something for me to do. It wasn't just a job. Um, it was a, a, a whole feeling. It was, uh, it was a calling. And, you know, uh, Tony and I, in the, in the last segment, were talking about uh, the experience of post-Vietnam. Did you feel that same kind of difficulty? When I came back from Vietnam uh, the first time, I wasn't really thinking about it, and I had my uniform on. And uh, when you had a young guy, I was hitchhiking home, I wasn't going to pay that money to uh, take a bus. I'm going to hitchhike home. I, I should be able to get a ride easy. And uh, I had uh, uh, a soda can thrown out of the window and some people saying things. Um, I had enough money to join a, the uh, VFW. I wanted to be a life member. Uh, the same thing that uh, Tony had was when they were talking about this, it was one of those, uh, 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 oh, when did you serve? I said, well, you know, I've got my leave papers in my pocket. I'm uh, actually on leave in Vietnam. I signed up for another six months. I'm going back uh, to Vietnam. Oh, that wasn't a real war. Well, you know, you know what you can do with your real war. And I left, and I didn't look back until the 1980s. But I got over it, and it's time for us to get over it. Um, and I'll never forget the time that I actually was at a uh, town meeting, and we were working real hard on getting the veterans exemption bumped up from the 200 to the uh, 500 that that particular town allowed. And the uh, individual that was the uh, chairperson for the budget committee, uh, Selectman wanted me to go up $500 a year. No, well, that's fine, as long as you know we're going to be up here going, you know, that $100 a year. And the uh, chairperson for the budget committee came around and talked as a uh, citizen. And he 
uh, actually said, you know, if we can't do this for our veterans, if we can't go from this 200 to the 500 that we allow the max, then shame on us. Right. And I'm, he made the motion to, to amend the article. And I get up to uh, thank him, and you got to talk, I'm, you know, a combat veteran for a year and a half. Uh, I was in the infantry for about 14 years. And uh, when I got up there, it kind of almost brought a little tear to my eye. I actually had to turn around and walk away, and I did not think it was going to affect me that way. But that was the first time that it was actually brought to my attention that some people actually really cared. Mm. Well, happy Veterans so, Day. Yeah. Thanks for the history right. lesson, too. Thank you very much. When we come much. back, uh, young veterans, are you engaging this type of thing? Stay with us. Welcome back in. Happy Veterans Day. I feel better now. Like you can say Happy Veterans Day and not feel like it's uncomfortable. I, I, I may take a little snippet of uh, John's discussion of Happy Veterans Day and put it on the radio tomorrow on WPRO because it was kind of an interesting conversation about that today. Gina Marie is now our guest. I mean, I'm glad that we're able to kind of shake it up a little bit with some of these um, officers of our veterans of foreign wars here in Rhode Island. Gina Marie Darty is a Navy veteran of how many years? 26 years. You said something funny to me. She said, listen, we don't have to do the female thing. I think it's obvious. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone always, oh, you're the first female or you're a female. Uh, that's obvious. Uh, yeah. We don't need to talk about that. Well, yeah, we? but everyone, you know, it's still, it's still an interest to people. Women in the military are finally beginning to get their just dues, don't you think? Yes, but it's always been very obvious to me. So we don't need to discuss it. Shine. Not Period. necessary. Yes, no excuses. Yes. No discussion. No, no gender differenti differentiation it necessary. It takes away the equality also, I think. Puts more focus. I'm getting some really good perspective here. Um, I shouldn't have been surprised by that. You said prior to the show that one of the things you want to talk about is the younger veterans engaging uh, on X number of levels. Like the veterans of foreign wars, are you having difficulty getting the younger veterans I've been a Speaking member members. of the Veteran of Foreign War since 2004, okay. and I haven't seen many of my fellow veterans joining, younger or um, my same age, and I wondered why. You're Gulf we, One. We all you're, do. The, you're Desert Shield, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And all of us comrades are I wondering won't ask why. I you your age. It would be absolutely, I don't care, male or female, it's just not appropriate. You didn't ask Tony or John. No, I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're we'll get in trouble here. Um, but um, perspective, so are you saying that, that membership in those organizations tends to be the older, yes. how do even I say this respectfully, the even seasoned veterans, yes. right? Um, why do you think that is? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. And uh, I would like to focus on their benefits. One of the reasons I joined this organization, um, I was lucky enough to go to Washington, D.C., Kansas City and see what the veteran of foreign wars uh, officers in the national office do for us, the GI Bill, um, other benefits like that. There's also a camaraderie that goes along with being part of the group, right? Isn't, isn't that part of the benefit? Of That's true. That's true. Not, so, so are you more concerned with veterans getting their just due in benefits, meaning tangible benefits, or just the just the, the whole continued relationship with fellow soldiers who have served and, and that kind of thing. That's very important also. When I uh, retired two years ago, it was very hard for me to um, go back into civilization because I missed my brothers and sisters, my mm. comrades. I missed that uh, camaraderie daily. Um, but for the younger veterans, that's really what I like to focus on is how to get them in to our organization. Let them know that uh, it's not just a bunch of old men. Uh, it really isn't. I'm well, what happens when I'm you proof. get discharged? I mean, do you, do, do you get the information about the, uh, the VFW and yes, no? I mean, what happens? Mm, you do go through a transition uh, program. Uh, they talk about the Department of Labor, um, your VA benefits, medical, things like that. Um, but not many organizations Veteran of Foreign Wars or DAV, American Legion. No. It's cool to be part of it. It is. Look at this cool uniform. Yeah. I think we've got a problem in this country 
Because I think we're just very disconnected in a lot of ways. Young people don't join Kiwanis, Rotary, Elks, uh, you know, all the way down the line. It, it, all of these culturally entrenched organizations that are my generation, your generation, we're the youngest of them, it seems, have a hard time recruiting even, you know, everyday citizens to, to regular service organizations. So I'm guessing that's the same challenge that you guys are having. Sort we of. are. Yes. Even in women's organizations, I've noticed the Waves National, which I'm also a member of, our president is 91, our vice president is 90, our state director is in her 90s. They're all World War II veterans. Um, I'm in there because I've seen the light, and I'm not sure how to get it out there to the rest of them. What is the what, so? What's the 30-second sell? You, uh, you know, young veterans coming out of service. You should be part of this organization because benefits, camaraderie, and carrying it on, carry on the legacy. All right. Um, your service, by the way, uh, was specifically Navy. Um, you have a little story about what it was like to, to do what you did? Mm. Or you don't want to share that today? <laughs> I love the Navy. The Navy was very good to me. Um, I was able to go to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I was able to uh, go on a few ships. Um, not every yeoman or every Navy female gets to go on ships. You have to volunteer. Hmm. I'll give you that piece, Dan. So you enjoyed your experience? Sir. Yes, okay. very much so. And it's okay to say Happy Veterans Day? Mm, please do. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you. And join the BMW and every other organization out there. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, your state of mind. Next. Your state of mind is important to us. That's the number to call. And of course, you can email and Facebook post and tweet. Here's a nice Facebook post. I think that just kind of says it all. Very simple. Uh, actually, it's an email that was sent to us by Lynn. It says, remember to give a veteran a hug on November 11th. I suggest you give a veteran a hug anytime you can give a veteran a hug and to say thank you. And as John told us earlier this evening, it's nice to say happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. We'll see you on the radio at noon tomorrow. I'm back here tomorrow night.